So let's recap kind of this transition from, so last time we talked about the, the approximate uh, accumulation function, and you worked on that, those questions with the, looking at the graph and seeing the parts of the approximate accumulation function in the graph. So let's kind of review again the transition from the approximate accumulation function to integral. So here's a good slide for that. And so uh, here's, here's our, this is kind of the pinnacle of the question. You know how fast something is changing every moment, you want to know how much of you have. And so now when you see this expression, you've seen lots of these expressions in your calculus career, but maybe you, hopefully you have a new perspective on it. So now whenever you see this, you want to think of it as this, right? So we want to think of it as this. This is what we came up with. But what's the condition on, on, on the second one that we think about the first one? Um, from the accumulation to the integral, we um, made really small delta x intervals. Right, right. OK, good. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was right. <laughs> good. Yeah, so, oh. so you think of this as, so you think of this, uh, when you ever see integral, you think of it as this, or the, the, the one line approximate accumulation function with a small enough delta x, so that values of a are indistinguishable from the exact accumulation. I mean, actually, it's, it's, it's small enough delta x so that the, the approximations no longer are different. That's really what we're saying. We make delta x small enough so that when you make it smaller, you don't really get a, it's not, it's like this doesn't change anymore, right? So that the approximations themselves are not different anymore because we're creating this exact accumulation function. It's not there already, right? So we, this is all we have to start with. So then you make the delta x smaller and smaller until those approximations don't differ anymore, and then we call it exact. Does that make sense? Okay. And so then that there's no the, the, the it's so small that partial there's no partial interval anymore. It's just it's just all like really small intervals. Okay. So how are these the same? So uh, we we know how fast something is changing at every moment, and. Uh, we want to know how much of it we have. Okay, so we want to look at how are each one of these items, one through six, how are they seen in both expressions, right? So how, where do we see, we know how fast something is changing in both expressions. So Elizabeth, where do we see, we know how fast something is changing in this first one? So wouldn't it be the r of f of t that's like inside the integral? Yeah, that's the, the rate. Good. Yeah, that's the rate function. We want to know how much of it we have. Or no, sorry, sorry. So then, uh, uh, Ashley, we know how fast something is changing. How do we see that down here? Um, it's the r portion in the... Yeah, in the sum. Yep, in the sum. Yeah. So this R, this right here, we got the exact rate function in our exact uh, net accumulation, and then the approximate rate function in the approximate accumulation. Okay, we want to know how much of it we have. Where is how much of it we have in this first one, Yasra? Uh, wouldn't that just be the, the whole thing? Good, yeah, it's the, the value of the function, right? It's the value of the function, and that's the same with uh, the other one too, yeah. Which is found by summing up, Donna. So how do we see the idea of summing up in this first one? So where among this indicates accumulating, summing up, running total? The integral? Yeah, right, the integral sign. And then, uh, Angel, what about down here? The summation. Yeah. So that's how we, this is like keeping track of all the accumulation up, you know, keeping track of all the accumulation up till then, right? That's summing, summing up. And so here's the most important one, and it's the one that students have the most trouble with. 
So we're, what are we summing up? We're summing up bits of change in the quantity, right? We're summing up bits of change in the quantity. Where do we see that in the first one? Sarah, where do we see a bit of change or little amount of accumulation in this first expression? Wouldn't it be the like what's inside the integral? So like the R of F T times D T part. Okay, she wants all of this. R of F T D T. She's saying that's how much that's a little amount of accumulation of our quantity. What do the rest of you think? That's good. Richard agrees. I agree. Oh, so okay, good. So so what is what is our what was our big foundational way of talking about this, right? What was what was this? R of F T D T is more simply what? Dy. What's that? Dy. Dy and and expressed as how? Dy expressed how? Mdx. And yeah. right, so this is our M dy equals m dx, right? M rate times dx. There it is. So that this this thing about constant rate of change, it's like the very core of integral. It's the very heartbeat of integral. That for a small change in our independent variable, we assume a constant rate. We get a little bit of accumulated amount, and then we get the running total of that, creates this accumulation function. So yes, there it is, m dx. There we go, all right, m dx. And then there it is, m dx. Okay, from the starting value of x, who's up? Have I gone through the whole cycle here? So Elizabeth, what's the starting value of x? Um, the starting value of x in the integral would be like the a. The a, right? So starting yeah. at a. Yeah, and it's the same for the other one, starting at a, to the current value of x. So our running total up to our actual independent variable of the function, that's x. Right, so that's our, that is our, so now, so the whole point is that when you see integral, you have this meaning for it, right? You have this, this meaning of accumulation of bits of our quantity or little amounts of change in our quantity. And we're keeping track of a running total by just continually adding on the new ones, right? As X increases through intervals. Okay, so let's do, I got a practice uh, worksheet for interpreting a real world situation given exact rate of change. And how does the temperature change from three to 315? Sarah, what did you all say? Um, we said that like at first it decreases at a decreasing rate and then increases at a decreasing rate and then decreases at an increasing rate, like it changes. Okay, so um, instead of talking about how the rate is changing itself, just in terms of just temperature, let's just do that first. So just what, what does the temperature do? So keeping it, keeping it more simple, I guess, is what I'm, what I'm meaning. Um, so I guess you could say it gets colder and then it starts to get warmer and then it gets cold again. Yeah, so this is the temperature going down, is that right? Does everyone agree with that? And the temperature going up? And what about here? Is the temperature going up or down? I can't read that. Well, it still goes up until it hits the x-axis the, right. the second time. Right, right. So this is the rate graph. So whenever the rate is negative, temperature is going down. Whenever the rate is positive, temperature is going up. Okay, so the first time after 3 p.m. when the temperature returns to 40 degrees. Uh, Ashley, yes. what do you think? Um, we said like around ish six. Six ish. Yeah, we just wanted to find like where the amount of decrease at the beginning was canceled out by the amount of increase that had happened. Excellent. I'm glad you didn't talk about area. Good job. <laughs> right? So, was there anyone thinking about area when you did this question? I know I did. Yeah. So, it, it's okay. I mean, so that is one, you know, thing that's going to happen here is that this area will be the same as this area, but where, so, but where does the area come from, right? Area comes from what rate times 
dx plus rate times dx plus rate times dx. So in terms of accumulation, we're thinking about uh, you know, the accumulations of rate times changes in x. And like you said, when, when is it going to gonna even out with how much it decreased here, over here? So visually that turns out to be the areas, but we want to think about it in terms of just accumulation of um, dx's, right? Other comments on that question? Um, yeah. We stood around seven. Is that like going out too far? Well, it's this is just eyeballing. If yeah, if you said anywhere from six to eight, then I I would guess that you had the right idea. Okay. Yeah. Okay. When is the temperature the lowest, Richard? Uh, we said the temperature was the lowest around uh, three points. Three point seven minutes after. Three point seven. So this intercept is that what you're thinking? Uh, yes. What about the rest of you? Agree with that? Okay, what about the highest? Highest temperature in this time? Uh, Donna? At about 13.2. This intercept. Everybody else agree with that? Okay, very good. All right, number four. The definition of A that gives exact accumulation of temperatures in the fridge from 3 p.m. until X minutes after 3 p.m. So who's next in my list here? Angel. We came up with A sub T of X okay. equals an integral from 0 to X, um, R sub T of T dt. Integral from 0 to X of? R sub T of T dt. Here's what's been offered up. What about the rest of you? Yasser likes it. Elizabeth likes it. Richard likes it. Yeah, good. Okay. So yeah, and so again, because we did we did all the heavy lifting of you know understanding where this comes from for the, through the approximate accumulation function, we've earned the right to just write it down, right? We can just write it down, knowing that it's representing that approximate that bad boy equation, that one line with all the, you know, all the bells and whistles in it, but for a very small delta x. Okay, temperature, uh, Yasra, number five. Um, T of T um, equals the, the integral from... So do you want T of T or do you want, you want T of x, right? Um, for our bounds, we use like zero to x, so... Um, we don't want to use x again. It's kind but of like the, what we did in part um, number four. But that that is the independent variable. So the, the, your upper limit of integration is your independent variable. The problem is you don't want it to be the same variable oh, okay. in the so, integral. Okay. So t of x uh -huh. equals the integral from 0 to x, r of t of t, dt, uh -huh. and then we'd add that. Um, the initial temperature of 40. Plus Adding 40. 40 to that. Rest of you. We good? Okay. Uh, let's see. I lost my order here. So who have I not called on yet? Let's see. So uh, sketch R sub T, the, uh, sketch the function, uh, using RT, sketch the function T on the axis to the right. Okay, I think maybe uh, Ashley, I haven't called on you yet. So it's something like this. So how did you go about sketching the function t? So I started it at 40. 40. And then it kind of like, I drew down. Mm -hmm. And then it curves back up when it starts to increase. And what at what time does it hit the min lo local minimum? at that like 3.8 right okay seven. good and then it increases and then it starts to like increase at a decreasing rate okay uh, and then it maxes at the 13.2 or whatever we good. said and then it starts to decrease something like that rest of you agree cool all right express the temperature in the fridge 
We can in two ways using function notation and as an integral. Richard. Express the temperature in the fridge at 310. So, Richard, what did you guys come up with? Richard, can you hear me? Oh, sorry. Yeah. I can't hear my, my name. I just heard it. <laughs> like a little stutter. Um, okay. Uh, for 7, I did T of 10 as the first way. Okay. And then, do I continue? Or? Sure. Okay. Um, the second way is um, 40 plus uh, the integral from 0 to 10. Uh, R sub T of, and I just put like a smiley face as my dummy variable. <laughs> okay. Not too uh, conventional, but. D, D sm smiley face, uh, D smiley face. Yeah. Oh, okay, that works too. And is there one more one more way to do this based on what we've done before? Anyone have a, a different variation on this? Um, it would be a limit. Okay, so I was I was not getting at that, but oh, okay. Is there, is there one more way to express this? So. Yes, yeah, so you wanted to like write out the okay so. Um, with the approximate accumulation function with a sigma, we could do that. But I'm thinking more a different, another function notation way. Could you do like 40 plus um, a t of 10? How about that? Does that do it? Angel says yes. Donna says yes. Yeah, good. Okay. All right, how about the change in temperature from 301 to 305 in two different ways? In fact, this is, again, we can do three different ways here. So uh, how about back to Sarah? Um, one of the ways we did um, was T of 5 minus T of 1. OK. How about Yasro? What was another way you guys, you all did? Um, we just said 40 plus the integral from 1, of, one to 5 of R of T of T times DT. Okay, what do we think? Um, in that one, would you not include the 40 since it's expressing a change in temperature? Okay, so there's a vote. So uh, one vote for adding the 40, one vote for not having the 40 in to express the change in temperature. What do the rest of you think? Uh, not adding the 40. Why, Richard? Uh, because um, like we're looking just for the change in the temperature, so it's, we don't have to include the initial temperature. Yeah, so is, is this referring to a total or a net? Net. Yeah, this is a net, right? So this is a net accumulation. It's like it's the accumulated changes in temperature starting from time one and ending at five. So Yasra, you want to stick to your guns or you want to change your mind? No, I think we have to remove that initial 40. Does it make sense? Because yeah. this, this is a very common thing. I see it all the time that you're expressing some change and then including that initial value. So it's, it's, you know, it's not a cut and dry thing. I think that it goes through a lot of students heads that, that we need that there. So I just want to make sure that does everyone agree with that confidently? Or you want to ask about it? Okay, is there a third way to do this? There is a third way to do this. Does anybody know what it is? Angel, looks like you're nodding a little bit. Wouldn't it just be that a sub t of 5 minus a sub t of 1? Will this do it? Will this get the same value? 
So how, how is it like math, you know, like algebraically or just computationally that these end up being the same? Like what's the difference between T and AT and how do then these two end up being the same value? Is it because in the T of five minus T minus one, I mean T of one, you're essentially subtracting that 40 out. And so it's, it's just leaving the changes in the net accumulation. Right, you have a 40 in this one. You're adding 40 to the temperature to get the temperature at five and you add 40 to get the temperature at one. So when you subtract, what happens to the 40s? They they, yeah, they go at, yeah, 40 minus 40 is zero. And you're just left with the difference of integrals or the, the or the single integral, right? And so that's why it's the same as this. Okay, uh, last one. The largest increase in temperature. So how do we express the largest? And let's just do it with only with function notation. So how would you use function notation to describe the largest increase in temperature? Ashley. Um, we did T of 13.5 minus T of 5 3.8. Okay, and then as an integral from 3.8 to 13.2, mm -hmm. add 40 or not? No. Yeah, don't add 40 because we want to start accumulating. It's like, so now we can think of starting accumulating from 3.8 and accumulating those changes in temperature until we get to 13.2, and then that. that Accumulation and changes of temperature will be the net change in temperature, which has nothing to do with the fact that it started at 40 degrees, right? Okay, any questions on this worksheet? Anything at all? Okay, let's run through what's going to be on the assessment next Thursday. And I will I will read through the this little document I made and then I'll post it on Canvas. Okay, so the first thing is the, uh, this approximate accumulation function, right? The one line bad boy. So knowing, knowing the meaning as a whole, knowing different levels of, of subparts, right? So we can, we can kind of look at the whole thing and then we can take a big chunk of it and then we can take a smaller piece of that and we can keep narrowing down to more and more detail. So at every level, you're gonna know, know the meaning of the, all the expressions at every level. Right, big picture all the way down to individual little pieces. Okay. Um, next thing is given a linear piecewise accumulation function in a real world context, answer questions about the situation according to like like rate of change, delta x, dx, dy, interpreting points on the graph, etc. Okay. Um, interpret an exact so given an exact rate of change function, interpret it, understand how to build approximate rate, build approximate accumulation from it, um, calculate specific values of approximate net accumulation, understand and evaluate values of the left function in this context. Okay, so this is all kinds of things we can do given a given exact rate function, um, all those different things. All right, uh, understand the process and order of functions that characterizes the endeavor, right? So the, the, the big picture of this endeavor, you know how fast the quantity is changing every moment, you want to know how much of it you have at every moment. So we looked at a, uh, at a process of functions that characterized that endeavor. And in fact, it was five functions. So like what came first, what came second, third, fourth, and fifth. Okay. And then uh, given an exact rate of change, and then, and then what characterizes the transition between each one? Like what is, how is it that we get from number one to number two and number two to number three, et cetera? <coughs> Finally, given an exact rate of change function set up, interpret and use expressions of exact net accumulation, exact total accumulation. That's what we did today. All right, so we did some of that today. So this is this is pretty much everything on the exam kind of falls under one of these bullet points. Anybody have a question? Are we going to have to print it out? Um, Let's see. No, I could put, I could make it into a canvas. I can make it into, it's all multiple choice. So I can make it into a canvas quiz. 
and then you okay. just will just uh, you can just go into the you'll you'll have your um, I'll be watching you and listening to you, but you'll just and then you'll just be taking it as a Canvas quiz. Okay, so that'll work. Thank you. Yeah, sure. And that way we can get immediate feedback. We don't have to we don't have to grade it by hand. That'll, that'll work good. Other questions? This is a general question. Like, Please. Um, uh, on the uh, on the assessment, are we going to know like which one do we have to use, like the sum notation or like the integral? Like, are, are we going to be able to tell like in which situation which one to use? Yeah, I mean, it would it would uh, definitely yeah. So it definitely the the it won't there won't be any ambig ambiguous instructions like that. So uh -huh. in the instructions, you would it would be clear if. If, if you had to make some kind of choice between those two, then it'll be clear. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure.